Pat, about the budget figures? Yes, and I was able to go back and plug in the correct numbers. Great. Okay. I'm just pulling up the script. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, my name is Brianna Owen and I'm calling this meeting to order as the co-chair of the Community Safety Working Group, Governor Baker's March 12th order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the Community Safety Working Group. Given that we have a quorum present, I'm calling the May 11th, 2021 meeting of the Community Safety Working Group to order at 7.03 p.m. I will call upon each member of the working group by name. At that time, you should unmute yourself and say present. This will indicate that you can hear us and we can hear you. Please remember to mute your mic after saying present and this meeting is being recorded. Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. Here. Uh, Ms. Walker. Here. Ms. Ferreira. Here. Um, uh, I want to take a couple of minutes to review the agenda. We will first hear any public comment that members of the public want to provide the working group. We will not provide, we will not respond to your comments, but we will listen carefully. We'll then move right into our agenda, which is to motion to approve the final report A draft. Um, so without further ado, we can head into public comment. If any member of the public would like to make a statement, please raise your hand. I will recognize you and ask Ms. Moyston to um, bring you into the room and turn on your microphone. I ask that all comments be limited to no more than three minutes. The working group will not be responding to your comments, but listening carefully. There is There are no attendees at the moment. Okay. Hi, Ms. Pat. Hi. Oh. Hi, Jen. Hi, Alicia. Hi, Russ. So we're just getting past public comment, but no one's here, so we can move right into the agenda. The only thing that's on the agenda tonight is to motion to approve the final draft. I hope you all had a chance to read it over and make revisions that you felt were necessary. I now want to open the floor for members to make comments on any major changes they feel are necessary to the ongoing draft. Ms. Pat. So I think, first of all, I want to thank uh, the subcommittee that worked on this. I think you guys did an excellent job. Also want to thank uh, Seven Gen for their contribution. I emailed uh, very late, maybe an hour ago or two, of the updated budget um, that we voted on. So I don't know if everybody got a chance to look at it. So um, I'm very happy with the work you guys did. Thank you so much. Thank you. I also want to recognize the subcommittee for all of the work that went into the draft. Um, Mr. Vernon Jones, thank you so much for starting that draft and getting it going. And Ms. Ferreira, thank you for going back and making those edits and having such a keen eye to details. One thing that I wanted to bring to the group's attention before we move forward to approve the draft, um, there was a small change made. Um, in changing the name of the Multicultural Center to the BIPOC, BIPOC Cultural Center. And I want to make sure that everybody in the group is okay with that. So. Ms. Pat. So I, I made a change because when, I remember during several com, uh, com, uh, discussion at the group, we were emphasizing on BIPOC um, uh, Cultural Center, so. I don't know if anyone has any objection to it. I mean, anyone can, you know, utilize the space that it is by BIPOC Cultural Center. It would be, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, given that at this point we're trying to attract as much support from the town council as possible, I guess I would rather we did the same thing we did with the Youth Empowerment Center and make it a BIPOC-led cultural center. Uh, it feels to me like that would keep the BIPOC focus, but would make it a more inclusive kind of thing, you know, and if a group of 
Polish people wanted to use it or a group of people who are deaf and their culture is partly in sign language, that it would be understood that that would be, that those are cultures and that the various cultures could use it. Ms. Pat. But I certainly want, I certainly wanted BIPOC led, no question about that. Uh, Ms. Pat. So if the town, I hear what you said, Mr. Ross, if the town approves such program, I think it will be accessible to everyone. But, you know, name does matter because there are so many other space for white folks that we don't mm -hmm. feel comfortable going to. Mm -hmm. So this would be like a space for BIPOC families. And that's what I heard from people that, you know, reach out to me that it would be nice to have a space just for BIPOC folks, that anybody can use it if they want to. Yeah, so this is Deborah. I don't know if there's a lineup, but I, like I said, I can't raise my hand. So I'll put the little hand sign. <laughs> Hi Deb. Is this Hi, a good time to talk or should I, is there a lineup? No, go ahead. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I'm, I'm more kind of going with what Ms. Pat said in terms of like, I think I want it to be kind of like BIPOC focused, uh, but again, open to anyone using it because I think there isn't, uh, there aren't spaces in the Amherst community that are really BIPOC focused and that to really kind of celebrate the BIPOC culture, you know what I'm saying? And kind of like, kind of have that focus. And then obviously it's, it's enveloping, it's inclusive, it's welcoming to every, every group, but I think it would be important to have uh, a BIPOC focused uh, center in our town because it would really empower the, the folks that don't have um, you know, that space and, and, and really empower in terms of making sure that there's services that are focused on that, on that pop, on that population too, because we know, you know, unfortunately in town, there aren't a lot of services that are focused on the BIPOC population. Um, so for me, you know, that would be, I, I would be in agreement with it being a BIPOC, uh, center. Ms. Walker, did you want to weigh in on this topic? Yes, yeah, sorry. And I apologize for um, I have a little bit of a noise. Sorry. sorry. I'm on the other room. Hold on. So I'll just share my perspective while we wait a second. Um, I'm in complete agreement with Ms. Ferreira and Ms. Pat, but I also just want to be mindful of the way the town council reads this and like be mindful of our audience and the people who are going to make our recommendations reality. So that's the only um, setback in my mind, but I do completely agree. I feel like every space in Amherst is a space for white people, but I can't say the same for members of BIPOC communities. Mr. Vernon Jones. Well, given your comments, I'm happy to support calling it a BIPOC cultural center. But since you all said it would be open to all peoples and cultures, why don't we simply insert that as the second sentence uh, in, the, in the paragraph that talks about it? I think that would work. Be, so call it a BIPOC cultural center and say it would be it will be open, open and available to uh, all people and cultures. Is that? Yeah, to all people, to all resident and culture. Yep. Um, Miss yeah. Bowman. Uh, Miss Bowman has her hand up, and then Miss Walker. Sorry. Sorry, I had to unmute. I like how Mr. Vernon Jones um, said it. Um, you know, one of the reasons why we were um, kind of like, 
because if it, it's like we're kind of steering it away and looking at multicultural center rather than BIPOC multicultural center is because um, we definitely want it being run by by the BIPOC BIPOC, BIPOC community, but um, on either particular days or through particular sessions or whatever, we do want it to be. Um, a place where non-BIPOC people, people can come and do research, get information, like, and feel like, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a weird dynamic. Cause it's like, I don't want you to feel comfortable, but I want you to feel comfortable. I want you to feel comfortable to walk in the door, but I don't want you to feel comfortable. Like you're okay with the status quo, if that makes sense. It totally makes um, sense to me. But I like what Mr. Vernon Jones said. I, I think that that's a, a good way of looking at it. Um, if, you know, yeah, I like that. I like that. That's all I have to say. Uh, Ms. Walker. Uh, Ms. Walker, did you have your hand up? Yes, sorry. Um, so I was going to say previously that I had the same conflict because um, although I want it to be BIPOC led and BIPOC focused, that I, I don't want to miss appealing to the other members of the community. And so I think the way that Mr. Vernon Jones put it like solves the conflict that I was having before though. So I am in full agreement with what Mr. Vernon Jones proposed. Awesome. Are there any other areas of the draft that people want to bring up? Because it sounds like we're all in agreement about the um, BIPOC Cultural Center. Ms. Pat? Yes. So um, in, in uh, listening to the um, last week down, down council meeting, I think CRES is being proposed as a social services program. I just want to remind ourselves that CRES is a um, public, public health program uh, that will be staffed by professionals who have social um, services background. So I don't want, person, I'm just expressing my opinion, I don't want CREST to be on that social services in town because it sounds like that's what is the thinking it should be an independent alternative public safety did i say health i'm sorry public safety public safety i apologize public safety public safety not not social services if that makes sense to people is that is that the way people are reading it because um go ahead Ms. Walker. Um, so I actually agree with Ms. Pat. I, I actually just realized that same thing today, earlier today at our um, meeting. I didn't realize it was listed under social services and I agree, but I'm not sure how we could propose something like that. I think it needs to be listed under um, a public safety because that was its intention. Yeah, Department of Press you know, which is, you know, public safety, alternative public safety or something like that. I just want us to be clear when our representatives are, are, are presenting the report, just to make it clear that it's not social services department, that it's going to be a public safety department. I'm in complete agreement. And I think that's like the first part of our charge. I can imagine people, I can imagine they are trying to probably move it to social services because people don't want to defund the police. So uh, this is Deborah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, a, I'm in total agreement with it too. I just think, uh, isn't that how we describe it in our report though? We, we, pretty, we pretty much kind of focus on that, right? Because today the focus is the report. I guess we're going to talk about the presentation later. I just want us to stay focused. Is that how? Because obviously I'm in agreement with it, but that's how we re we represented it in the report, right? Miss Pat. 
Yes, Deborah. I just I, I'm just raising. So I'm just raising an awareness. You know, that's how you know it was written in the report as a public safety. But I believe you know the town manager and the town council. I think they're thinking it's a social services program. I just yeah, want yeah. you know want them to know that we're talking about public safety run by no, definitely. social yeah. services professionals, if that makes sense. No, yeah, no, definitely. I definitely agree. And then, like you said, we'll, we'll definitely need to make that very clear when we do yes. the presentation. Yes. Mr. Yep. Vernon Jones. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And I think, but I think it belongs in our presentation. You know, the very first page of our report after the table of contents is our charge. And the first sentence is, the community safety working group was assigned the following purpose, to make recommendations on al al alternative ways of providing public safety services. So it's there in line one in our report. Uh, but I think what Ms. Pat said is well taken and should be thought about in the presentation. I agree. Are there any, um, are there any other major concerns people wanted to bring up about the draft of the final report? So, um, I know that we're going to, oh. Oh, Ms. Pat. Okay. I know we're going to include the report from 7 Gen. Am I missing something? I didn't say it. Are we going to include that or not? Yes, we are going to include it. Um, the reason why it wasn't in the Google Docs is because I was going to put it all together once I added graphics to everything. So I apologize it wasn't all there. But yes, okay. we are going to add the report for sure. Okay. Um, so when, when we vote on this report, do we have you know, some time, like give me five, 10 minutes? I have you know, other ideas I want to throw out, out, or should we just do it now? Oh, do it now. So um, I'm thinking, I know that um, you know, we have rep who are going to be presenting. I think it will make our case very powerful if we include reps from 7 Gen um, with the presentations. I don't know what we're planning or thinking about doing, but it would be nice for them to actually present their own um, research. And we don't have a lot of time. Um, the chair, the council, counselor chair, you know, is giving us 10 to 20 minutes for everything, question and answer. So. I don't know how we're going to work this, but I would very much like to see reps from Southern Gen to participate when CSWG reps present. Definitely. Um, the subcommittee met today and 7th Gen was part of that conversation. Oh, okay. we, yeah, we have an outline of um, the presentation that okay. is it's, it's an ongoing work in progress. Maybe we can include it in the packet tomorrow so group members can get an idea of where we're at okay. and also add things that they think we're missing. Okay. Um, but that's that's where that is now. Okay. Mr. Vernon yeah, Jones? I may be wrong, but the way I read the email was we have 10 to 20 minutes to present and question time would be in addition to that. Um, I mean, if if I'm wrong about that, they'll correct us. But I, I think I think that's what we should plan. Uh, but in terms of tonight's meeting, uh, do we want to go ahead and vote on this report? Yes. Yes. Well, well. Before that, just one quick thing. Yeah, definitely. I, I hope that that is going to be on the agenda, like the presentation, because I definitely want to. I definitely want to um, get more of an idea of what, you know, what the draft has been. So I definitely want that on the agenda. And then um, there was one other thing that I wanted to, uh, it escapes me. If it comes back to me, uh, I'll say it. Sounds good. Do are, Is everybody comfortable with moving toward um, approving the draft? Oh, okay. sorry. I just, re I just remembered it. Sorry. Um, if there's any question about how much time we have, um, um, Ms. Owen, can you contact the the, the uh, town council, like Lynn or whomever it is that contacted us just to kind of get clarity because we definitely want to know how much time we have for the presentation and how much time we have for the Q&A. Definitely. That's going to be important. 
Um, so I see Lynn, I see Lynn is actually in the audience. Um, I will reach out to her after this meeting and ask her what our timeline for that presentation is going to be and also the q and I think that's really important and thank you for yeah. bringing it up. Yeah, okay, that's it. So one more thing, I promise, the last thing. <laughs> oh, Miss Pat. <laughs> so do we know, you know, have we decided they will be meeting with the finance committee and the and the school council and the council members or something. Uh, do, we, Ms. Walker. do we have a date for that? Um, so I believe that Ms. Walker. Yes, thank you. you. So that was actually something I wanted to bring to the group. Um, so um, town councilor Lynn Greischmer, I believe, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, um, was at our meeting earlier today and she did comment on the, the um, finance committee meeting and that we would have the opportunity at a time specifically set aside for our group to make a presentation to the finance committee at a following meeting. Um, do you remember the date of that meeting? So the, da the dates that she threw out um, was May 26, which, fa which falls on a Wednesday, and then May 27. Um, Can we try to, to pick a, a date now? Yeah, so we did move the meetings to Thursday. So I think to maximize our time, if people could meet Wednesday, we could do that. Or if we met the 27th, it would probably take over our meeting time. Can we meet on Thursday? Oh, so we, because we'll be moving our meeting on Thursday or because of me. Okay. I wonder if would the finance committee be okay for six o'clock on Wednesday? I can run that by them. Would that work for everybody else on the 26th? Yeah, I can't I can't check my calendar because I'm driving. So I, I can't commit to anything right now. Can we okay. just talk about this tomorrow? Deborah is on Wednesdays when we meet. We we typically meet on Wednesdays. Yeah, I get it, but we switched some things and we we're did, gonna yeah. be meeting on Thursday. So I might have something. Wednesday. Sometimes I have, I've, I've been kind of like not going to a Wednesday evening meeting that I have once a month for my job. So oh. if I'm able to do that, I might not be able to do that Wednesday, you know? Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. Uh, I think we do need to get back promptly to the town council and the finance committee, but I think tomorrow is fine to finish that up if everybody can look at their calendars and let's just agree that we'll make that decision uh, tomorrow. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, will you entertain a motion to that we approve our report? Yes. I, I move. Not that. <laughs> oh, not done yet. Sorry. I move we approve uh, our report uh, as um, amended tonight with the uh, one little sentence we inserted uh, and. Um, and um, refer it to Ms. Owen for formatting and, uh, and graphics and release it promptly to the town manager and the uh, town council. And finance committee. And finance committee, thank you, yeah. Do I have a second? I second that. Do we have to do a roll call for this, Ms. Moisten? Yep, yeah, I would just go ahead. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't really hurt, so yeah. Yeah, you probably should but for something important like this, like a report for the town council, probably better do a roll call. Okay, so we'll do a roll call of an agreement to move to motion um, the final draft for part A of our charge. Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones? Aye. Ms. Walker? Aye. Aye. Ms. Pat? Aye. Ms. Bowman? Aye. Ms. Ferreira? Aye. Okay, awesome. So um, I think that that's we, all we, we have. You got a vote as well, Brianna. Yep. Oh, okay. Aye. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Facilitating these meetings doesn't get less awkward, <laughs> You're sadly. Doing You're doing good job. You're doing great. <laughs> You're, you're making me red. you're making me turn red stop <laughs> <laughs> um okay so i think that's all we had tonight so um i motion to adjourn do i have a second 
Second. I second. Yeah. And we'll do a roll call and then I'll be out. Uh, Mr. Vernon Jones. Aye. <laughs> Miss Walker. Aye. Miss Pat. Yes. Miss Bowman. Aye. Aye. Miss Ferreira. Aye. Hi, thank you guys for coming today and making this date work on such short notice. I appreciate coming and I will get to work on those graphics and have that to the group ASAP. Thank you. See you guys tomorrow night. Bye, everybody. Bye. Everybody helped Bye. get us here. Congratulations to everyone. Congrats, everyone. Good job. Congrats.